So here we go. Um, but now I need to minimize you all. Do I need to minimize you all? Is that what I need to do? Or is this, I think this is my, nope, that's not it. Um, I can't, can't do that. <laughs> I'm trying to get to my desktop, to my PowerPoint, but I can just open it right here. How's that? Can you all still see me? Um, Lisa, shake your head if you can still see me. Okay, all right. Let me grab this PowerPoint. Let's go. This is chapter nine, preparing yourself to lead. Leading is involves a journey of personal and professional growth. And I always like to stick this slide in here. What you do for a living now is talking to people. Talking to people is what you do for a living, so it has to become a part of your lifestyle. That's a quote from Sarah Robbins. There are, these are 10 of the top lessons that she has learned in network marketing. That's what this whole chapter is, these 10 lessons. The first lesson is 86, the ego. In other words, there can be a lot of ego in this kind of business and a lot of rejection. Humility is the ability to not be moved by flattery or by criticism. You can have both at the same time. You always need to be willing to learn, to grow, and to accept feedback. You need to watch your attitude, talk to your upline, not your downline if you are discouraged. Don't compare yourself to others. That is a waste of time. The death of contentment is comparison. I ran into a couple of ladies today at a restaurant that we were eating at. And they, it's kind of interesting, they had a Plexus Slim logo on the back of their car. And when we were leaving, they said, are you Heather Othout's mother? I mean, that's my new name, Heather Othout's mother. And I said, yes. And they said, well, I'm the lady that you took the picture of my car with the Plexus Slim. Slim logo on the back. So anyway, we got to talking. It was at the same exact restaurant where I'd seen their car before. And uh, they were telling me one of them was um, silver and one was gold, almost senior gold, and how long they'd been in Plexus. And you know, it doesn't matter how long you've been in. it. We all progress at different rates. But it was very interesting to meet them and to be Heather Althout's mother. <laughs> Secondly, you need to exude energy and excitement. We are in the promoting business. Meetings, calls, and big events are what catapult people to success. This is where their belief is built. Enthusiasm is a catalyst for success. We need to exude the same amount of energy and excitement every time we do a prospecting call or a meeting because that is what creates vision for people. Oh, did I put the same one in here twice? I think I did. Third, we need to encourage. Good leaders are great at recognition for accomplishments, both small and great. And it has been said that people will work harder for praises than for raises. Recognition can be free. It can be like a quick little call or a handwritten note. Or Sarah suggests you could even slip in a $5 gift card like for a coffee shop, coffee shop with a little note that says, your business is brewing. She emphasizes, don't go overboard on expensive items. It's the thought that counts. Your team will follow your lead. Can you afford what you're doing when you have five or 50 or 500 people at that level? Number four, you need to engage your team. Good leaders know how to take a spotlight and turn that spotlight on their teams. You need to think of ways that you can involve your team at meetings, like being greeters, setting up, taking down, sharing their success story. People will buy into what you are doing when they are involved in the process. You need to educate your team. Good. Mom, what? We cannot see the PowerPoint. Oh, you can't? 
No. What have I done wrong? You didn't share it. Share screen. Yes. Share screen. I'm so sorry. No, it's um, fine. I, I just wanted you to know. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So, so now I, I can grab it right here. Okay. Let, yes. me run, let me run back to these first ones real quick. Now, how do I, let me move you all over here. Okay. Now, can you see it? Yeah, shake your head if you can see it. Okay, thank you. All right, zip back through there real quick. Preparing to lead, it's a journey of personal and professional growth. I said I always include this picture. What we do for a living is talk. These are the top 10 lessons that Sarah has learned in network marketing. First of all, to 86, the ego. There's a lot of ego rejection but we can have both at the same time, humility and criticism. We have to be willing to learn, grow, accept feedback, watch our attitude, talk to our upline, not to our downline if we're discouraged. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. That's a waste of time. The death of contentment is comparison. We need to exude energy and excitement. We are in the promoting business. Meetings, calls, big events are what catapult people to success. This is where their belief is built. Enthusiasm is a catalyst for success. We need to exude the same amount of energy and excitement every time we do a prospecting meeting or call. That's what creates the vision for people. We need to encourage. Good leaders are great at recognizing for accomplishments, both small and great. People will work harder for praises than for raises. Recognition can be free, like just a quick call or a handwritten note. And like I mentioned, $5 gift card to a coffee shop says your business is brewing. And don't go overboard on expensive items. If your team cannot duplicate what you're doing, then you should not be doing it. Number four, you should engage your team. Good leaders know how to take the spotlight and turn it on their teams and away from themselves. Think of ways that you can involve them in meetings like greeters, set up, take down, share their stories. People buy in when they're involved in the process. We need to educate your team. I think this is about where I was before. Good leaders take responsibility to train their teams. They don't rely on someone else. When someone commits to doing this business with you, they are entrusting their success to you. They joined because they believed in you. So you need to keep it simple. You need to be the best leader you can be. If you need support or you're no longer committed to the business, you need to direct your team to your upline. We will take care of your team if you want to drop out. We will. Number six, equip your team. Develop a mentality that you are out to create empowered entrepreneurs. In other words, turn off your enabling button and duplicate yourself as quickly as possible. Don't get stuck in some sort of management mode. I am not your um, boss. I cannot tell you what to do. You are your own boss. I'm not even your manager. I'm just trying to be a leader to some people who really want to be good leaders. You need to encourage your team to rise to the challenge and develop their own leadership right away. And I know that many of you have your own teams. I know that, that you have your own Facebook groups. You have Some of you have your own calls and team meetings, and that is wonderful. I will tell you this. The first time that I went to Shreveport and my team was doing a meeting all themselves and they didn't even ask me to do anything I felt really really funny and kind of left out but that's exactly what I was hoping they would eventually do and that's what they did they basically had a meeting and I was just a bystander in the stands but it felt really different to be in that position 
Number seven, encouragement's important. Good leaders know how to elevate and lift up the entire organization. I spelled that word wrong. Your team needs a sense of security in who they're entrusting their future to. Why elevate and lift up your downline? Because they contribute to your income and they will either appreciate or resent that based on their relationship with you. If you try to be bossy, they're gonna be very resentful. Why would you encourage your upline? This is critical for them to be effective when working with your team on calls and at events. Use your words to build people up, not tear them down. How you speak of others is a true reflection on you. Your character is the only thing that's going to follow you. Ethical leaders go the distance. You need to be a person of abundance and integrity. You need to do the right thing at all times. You need to tell the truth. You need to honor your team and the company and don't gossip. And I love this example that she used in the book. When someone comes to you with gossip, ask, can I go to that other person right now and quote you on that? And if the answer is no, they are not really looking for solutions. They're merely interested in gossip. You need to treat the prospects of others with respect. If a prospect comes to a meeting and the sponsor isn't there, you need to treat them kindly and immediately connect them back to the person who shared the opportunity with them. Don't try to steal that prospect away. Don't say, well, she didn't show up, but hey, I'd love to have you under me. That is not right. There will come a time when you will want someone else to do that for you. Good leaders lead by example. Don't try to teach people things that you are not willing to do yourself. Never stop recruiting and never stop building. New blood brings new life. If you stop recruiting, you will die a slow death in network marketing. You need to work with the willing and love the rest. You need to work with those who deserve it, not necessarily those who really need it. How do you identify those who deserve it? By their actions. You watch their feet, not their mouths. You watch what they are doing, not what they are saying. You match your team's effort. And I thought this was a funny cartoon I found. It's a doctor. You can see he has a little problem there. He says, are you eating properly and getting plenty of exercise? That's what he's saying to his patient. We don't want to be like that. Good leaders endure, endure, endure. She's saying pick a company and stick with it. In other words, it's not plexus today and candles tomorrow and oils next month. Stick with one company and, and do well with that company. The grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is only green where you water it. Do you all remember the story about Susie? Susie was the one whose sponsor decided this was never going to work for her and so she quit and she ended up made a 50 million dollar mistake when Susie became one of the greatest people in the company. And I know you've heard this before, the grass isn't greener over there. Whoever always looks for greener grass on the other side will never be able to appreciate the green grass that was right under their feet the whole entire time. There will be ups and downs. Success requires you to fail forward. Discipline your disappointments. Don't let them get you down. Don't deviate from your mission. Be driven by your dream. You can give up or you can continue to learn. The only way you're going to fail is if you quit. So don't quit. Now let's look briefly at chapter 10. Chapter 10 was more or less what happens to your dreams. How much do you believe in your dreams? The power of belief. What is your dream? 
Have you written your dream down? Do you have pictures about what your dream is that you hope to fulfill through Plexus? Sarah shares about the dream of opening up an orphanage in India and seeing that become a reality through her network marketing business. And she talks about how recently she and her husband made a trip to India and not just one orphanage, but visited a number of orphanages where the children were being fed, where they were being educated, where they had food to eat and they were clean. And she said, honestly, she never would have dreamed that would have ever been possible. But because of network marketing, she has helped make that possible for many, many children in India. It takes time and money to pursue many of our life passions. Network marketing can be the greatest vehicle to provide the time freedom and the financial freedom to live a life you love. Your dreams can be realized this way. You just have to remain coachable and committed. You can never give up. We never learn it all. I know you all would agree. None of you know it all. I don't know it all. The day I die, I will still be learning. I really love to learn. And the reason I love to do these PowerPoints is because I learn so much from them myself. Some people will see success sooner than other people. Many people will give up. There will be times you want to quit, but if you remain coachable and committed, you'll make it. You have to persevere. You will face resistance. That isn't a sign to quit. You are where you are supposed to be. You are being refined. We all have impact on lives, whether it's our marriage, our ministry, our families, our businesses, our career. We all have people who are depending on us to be effective and cast a vision for them to reach their potential. Just don't ever give up. I know this may seem silly to you, but I, I went to look for a picture here today and I kept seeing the picture of this stork or whatever he is with a frog in his mouth. And it was the same sort of picture over and over and over. And it finally realized, I finally realized the frog is squeezing his neck because the frog wants out of there. The frog is not willing to give up that easily. He's going to choke that bird until that bird lets go of him. That concludes our study. Now it is time for you to get ready to shine. Let's all go to diamonds. I know some of you have the possibility I've said to you, Heather and I would not care in the least if you made it to Diamond before we did. We would be so excited if you were to do that. Now, let me see. I can get rid of the PowerPoint. How do I get you all back? And where I see all of you. Stop the share. Uh, stop share. Okay, great. Thank you, Heather. Uh, you know, I miss you when you're not on this call because I make a big mess almost every single time. <laughs> okay, I'm going to unmute you all. And I just have one, one of the thing I wanted to tell you. I'm hearing an echo of myself in the background. Um, a number of months ago, Beth Wellman gave, you hear that echo? We hear it. You're going to have to mute us again. Okay. Let me mute you all again. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, a number of months ago, Beth Heilman gave Rod and I a CD and said it was one of the best she'd ever heard. And Rod recognized the name of the person on the CD, and his name was Jim Rung. And this is the CD I'm talking about. It's called Building Your Network Marketing Business. Jim Rohn was one of the best network marketers in the whole world. And 
from what they said on the CD, Rod and I were listening to it, and we got the impression that maybe he had died already. So I went to Google and looked him up, and he did. He passed away in 2006. Rod used to listen to his CDs all the time when we lived in Oklahoma City, and that's like over 20 years ago. But And then when I went to Google and found out more about him, he was the founder of Herbalife which I know you all have heard about, a health and wellness company like ours. But that's how he made his money, and he, he never started out that way. I mean, he knew nothing about nothing, kind of like Heather and I, knew nothing about nothing when we started this business. And um, But anyway, Rod and I have been listening to this. We listened to it Sunday on the way to church, and we listened to it a little bit on the way back. And I'm going to listen to it about 10 times. Sometimes it takes me about that much listening to something to really, really get it. But I want to share with you all through a PowerPoint some of the highlights of this CD. And I ask a friend today, I have a limited number of these. How can I distribute them fairly? I don't want to just give them to people. I want people to, you know, earn them in some way. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give one. I'm going to order some more of these, and I'm going to give them to everybody who has a thousand PV or more this next month, this month in August. If you can work really, really hard and get a thousand PV, and that was 10 or 11 of you this month, um, I will send each of you one. But in the meantime, I'm going to work on a PowerPoint because he has, he has a religious um, twist, I guess you would say, to a lot of what he says. He talks about the sower. The Seeds and the Sower, the story in the Bible, which I know most of you all know. And it's in a, a new and refreshing way, like I've never thought of before. And he uses some funny little catchphrases, which I want to explain to you all in future weeks, about um, chasing birds, not chasing birds. There's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed was good. It's what happened to the seed. And sometimes we just can't worry about what happens to the seed when the bird takes the seed away. There's nothing we can do about that. It's so applicable to our own business. And I really very much am looking forward to sharing that with you all. So um, I wanted to let you know that's what we're going to do next. And um, unless something else prevents me, we will start that next Tuesday night. Now, Heather and I have talked about... Heather, can you unmute yourself, or do I need to unmute you? Heather, are you unmuted now? Let's see. I can unmute myself. Okay. I can do it. I okay. just put ice in my mouth. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, Heather and I have talked about maybe trying to combine our Zoom meetings because, you know, you could have a Zoom meeting every night of the week once you get really good leaders going in this team. And... Um, and we feel like we could be that together. So Heather and I are going to talk about that and work on that and see what we can do. So we're not taking up so many of your nights because I know when school starts again, it's going to be hard. It's been a little easier maybe this summer, but uh, it's going to be harder when school starts. So Heather, do you have anything else to say? Did you get rid of your eyes? Yes, kind of. Um, <laughs> I don't see your picture anymore, Heather. Well, I don't. I don't know how to unmute myself to where you can see my picture. I, I see you now. I see you and I Can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm going to stop the recording, by the way.